Good morning. Thank you very much for your invitation. It is a great pleasure for me to be here, and uh, I will try to do my best to talk about new medical treatment about heart failure. And as we know, it's a new guideline 2021 from European Society of Cardiology. And uh, short, short um, uh, definition from uh, Uji Brownwald, the uh, 1918. The pathophysiology state in which is an abnormality of cardiac function is responsible for the failure of the heart to pump blood as a rate commensurate with the requirements of the metabolizing tissue. It's a little bit complicating and it's a little bit old definition from Uji Brownwald when he was very young. And right now we have 2021 guidelines from diagnosis and treatment, acute heart and chronic heart failure. Uh, it's a, from the European Society of Cardiology, and uh, we, you can compare the 2016 and 2021 guidelines and new treatments, what's the new in guidelines and what's the new in the uh, heart failure treatment. Uh, short reminder, it's a class of recommendation at level of evidence. It's also a little bit changing new guidelines and new treatments of heart failure. And definition of heart failure is reduced ejection fraction. Right now, in the new guidelines, we will see the mildly reduced ejection fraction and preserved ejection fraction. What's the new? At least some new concept compared with the 2016 uh, version. New concept is a short change of term heart failure with a mid-range ejection fraction to heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction. A new simplified treatment algorithm for half path and half rough. The addition of the treatment and algorithm of half rough according to phenotypes, modified classification of acute HF, understanding treatment of most non cardiovascular comorbidities, including diabetes, hyperkalemia, and deficiency in cancer, update of cardiomyopathies, including the role of genetic test and new treatment, and the addition of case quality of uh, quality indicators. Quality indicators. Uh, in the new guidelines of European Society of Cardiology 2021, we can see the diagnostic algorithm for heart failure. It's just for primary care and uh, uh, GP doctors when first our emergency departments. In suspect heart failure, it's with risk factors, symptoms, and or signs, abnormal EKG, and well, we will check the anti-pro BMP or BMP. When it's normal, when it's normal, uh, we have to check uh, heart failure, another condition. And if it's high uh, in emergency department of primary care doctors, and we have to do the echocardiography and abnormal findings and uh, heart failure comfort defined heart failure phenotypes like half rough, it's the EF less than 40% and um, mild reduced ejection fraction in between 41 and 49 and half puff with half ferro is preserved ejection fraction more than 50%. Um, therapeutic algorithm of the class one therapy indication for a patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. It's management of a patient with half rough is the ACE inhibitor, beta blockers, MRA, dapagliflozin and epagliflozin, loop diuretics if the fluid retention. It's class one recommendation. And also in the new guidelines, we will see this uh, recommendation for the uh, left ventricular ejection fraction when it's less than 35%, QRS less than uh, 100 seri, and uh, we have to think and we have to do the ICD, non-ischemic class 2B recommendation and ischemic class 1 recommendation. Goals of pharmaceutical of pharmacotherapy of patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Pharmacological treatments indicate in patient with NIHA class 4 and 2, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. It means, the, as we know, the LVEF less than 40%. It's recommendation for the treatment as AC inhibitor is recommended for patient with half rough to reduce the risk of HM hospitalization in this is a class one level A recommendation. And beta blockers is recommended for patient with stable half rough to reduce the risk of HM hospitalization in this. And MRI is recommended for patient with half rough to reduce the risk of HF hospitalization and uh, this. And in the new treatment and new guidelines, we will see 
uh, very important step and a class 1A level recommendation is dapagliflozin and empagliflozin are recommended for patients with half rough to reduce the risk of heart failure, hospitalization, and death. Um, and uh, class 1 and B level recommendation is a sacubitril satan is recommended as a replacement of AC inhibitor in patients where heart failure is reduced ejection fraction. And Heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, it's very important to start uh, treatment with dapagliflozin or epagliflozin are recommended for patients with reduced ejection fraction to reduce the hospitalization and deaths. Uh, uh, as a cardiologist, we know as the sodium glucose transporter in renal tubes, as HGLT or uh, inhibitor, it was the first treatment for diabetic patient, but but right now, in the European Societal Guideline 2021, we'll see this uh, HGL2 inhibitor for treatment, uh, reduced heart failure, uh, patient with reduced EF, even without diabetes, even without diabetes. And empagliflozone, he has an original article from New England of Journal of Medicine, empagliflozone cardiovascular outcome and mortality in type 2 diabetes, heart failure, we will see, compared to placebo, placebo in heart failure, hospitalization is decreased. And very important trial about the LGLT or dapagliflozine had DAPA-H trials, DAPA-H trials, which has also decreased the death and uh, rehospitalization of the patient with low ejection fraction. Uh, and very interesting article in the, also in the, in the this DAPA, DAPA-HF trials, the effect of dapagliflozine worsening HF and cardiovascular disease in patient with heart failure with and without diabetes. It's very important when we start this treatment, dapagliflozin, patient without diabetes. The DAPA-H trial investigates the long-term effects of dapagliflozin, HGL2 inhibitor compared to placebo in addition to optimal medical therapy or morbidity and mortality in patient with ambulatory heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. In this exploratory analysis of randomized clinical trial of patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, dapagliflozin compared with placebo when it's to recommend a therapy, significantly reduce the risk of worsening heart failure or cardiovascular disease independently of diabetes status, diabetic status. Uh, very important is the new treatment and new algorithm in the European Society Guideline 2021, the strategic phenotype overview of the management of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Management of reduced ejection, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is uh, to reduce the mortality for all patients. It's a standard therapy, is ACE inhibitor, beta blocker, MRA, and AGLTO inhibitor to reduce the HF hospitalization, mortality, and well, for select patient. And, uh, and very important is the change in new guidelines and new treatment. It's a change, patient with heart failure and atrial fibrillation also. And very important to reduce the hospitalization and improve the quality of life for all patients. It's one of the important steps to improve the quality of life. And uh, in the new treatment, we will see as a pharmacological treatments indicate in select patient with NIHA class 2 and 4, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, EF less than 40%, is soluble good Gualinate sickly stimulator, very good, maybe considering patients with NIHA class 2 and 4 who have had worsening HF despite treatment of standard therapy like ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, MRA to reduce the risk of cardiovascular mortality of H heart failure hospitalization. It's a B, you know, 2B and B recommendation. And we will know this very good article from Victoria Trials from New England Journal of Medicine. It's a very sugar in a patient with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction. Uh, it's a primary outcome. The slide will see the slide. It's a primary outcome. is this from cardiovascular cause and hospitalization from heart failure and it is from any cause of hospitalization of the heart failure. Among the patient with high risk, high risk heart failure, the 
incidence of this uh, from cardiovascular course or hospitalization front failure was lower among those who receive the who receives the very sick word. And uh, as we know, this uh, heart failure patients, uh, especially with the aging patients, you can see very often, uh, very often the with comorbidities and management of atrial fibrillation in patient with uh, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction with reduced ejection fraction it's very important and in this slide we will see the green for class of recommendation one and yellow is this class of recommendation 2a and orange for class of recommendation 2b and red for class of recommendation three and very important in this slide it's in the new treatment option is this patient with uh, atrial fibrillation and low EF for the rhythm control, it's uh, one of the options is PV ablation. It's a class 2A recommendation or a murderon class 2B re re recommendation. And also for rate control, for rate control, AV node ablation is a class 2B recommendation. Uh, also, it's a uh, quite important change in the guidelines when we see the change in the recommendation is 2021 and 2016 recommendation for the management of patients with HF and atrial fibrillation drugs are recommended in prefer vitamin K antagonist in patients with HF except in those with moderate or severe mitral stenosis or mechanical prosthetic heart wall. Beta blockers should be considered for short and long term rate control in patients with HF and atrial fibrillation. In case of clear association between paroxysmal or persistent atrial fibrillation, worsening or heart failure symptoms which persist despite medical therapy, catheter ablation should be considered for the prevention or treatment of atrial fibrillation. And very important, very important and patient with heart failure and comorbidities with wild disease, with wild disease management of patients with severe low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis and heart failure. Very often in our everyday practice, we see the patient with uh, low ejection fraction uh, and also low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis. It's a very difficult situation, especially in the aging patient and in the, uh, the frail for the frail patient. And another good option is TAVI procedure. TAVI procedure, and it's a, and it's a good good recommendation from European Society of Cardiology. And, uh, and uh, um, also this recommendation is management on secondary mitral regurgitation in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction. Mitral uh, um, MR despite optimal therapy and low surgical risk, two randomized trial Mitra FR and COAPT evaluates the effectiveness of percutaneous H2H mitral wall repair plus. And as we remember this trial and COAPT criteria all of the following criteria must fulfilled LVEF less than 20% and uh, uh, left ventricular and systolic diameter out less than 70 millimeter, systolic pulmonary pressure at less than 70 millimeter, uh, absence of moderate or severe right ventricular dysfunction or severe TR, absence of hemodynamic instability. And recommendation of this uh, heart disease and uh, valvular disease patient with heart failure. It's recommended aortic stenosis class one, class one recommendation at aortic valve replacement TAVI or uh, TAVI or surgery. It's recommended in patient with HF and severe high gradient aortic stenosis to reduce mortality and improve symptoms. It is recommended that the choice between TAVI and surgery uh, be made by the heart team, as we know, there are lots of patients that have a comorbidities and frail patients. It's for secondary mitral regurgitation. It's a percutaneous H2H mitral repair should be considered in carefully select patient with secondary MR regurgitation. Not eligible for surgery. It's not, uh, not need coronary vascularization. If the patient has a ischemic heart disease and also mitral wall problem and he, he or she needs a bypass surgery is considered to replace the mitral valve also mitral valve. 
and 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 uh, also the recommendation for the tracuspid regurgitation is a trans catheter therapy and surgical may be considered in select cases. In the select cases, tricuspid wall surgery is recommended in, the, in patient with severe TR required left side cardiac surgery. Recommendation for the management of anemia and iron deficiency in patient with heart failure. Uh, lots of patients, lots of patients, patients we will see our day practice, they have anemia and iron deficiency. And this is the, uh, if the patient has reduced EF and anemia, it increases rehospitalization and also the patient uh, will be symptomatic. It is recommended that all patients with HFP periodically screened for anemia and iron deficiency with a full blood count, serum ferritin concentration, and transferring saturation and transferring saturation. Intravenous iron supplementation with ferric carboxymaltose should be considered in symptomatic patient with left ventricular ejection fraction less than 45 and iron deficiency. Defined as serum ferritin less than 100 milligram milliliter, all serum ferritin between 100 and 299 milligram milliliter with ferritin the transferring saturation with transferring saturation less than 20 percent to elevate heart failure symptoms, improve exercise capacity and quality of life. Intravenous iron supplementation with ferric carboxymaltose should be considered in symptomatic heart failure patient recently hospitalized for HF and with LVF less than 50 percent and iron deficiency is also the new recommendation of the new guideline in the European Society of Cardiology. Recommendation for the treatment of diabetic patient in heart failure. Uh, as we know, we also patients with diabetes, they have a heart failure from uh, with comorbidities, different kind of disease, and recommendation is, as we mentioned before, the HGLTO inhibitor, the dapaglifosin, aflaglifosin, and SGLTO inhibitors group are recommended in patients with type 2 diabetes at risk of cardiovascular event to reduce hospitalization for heart failure, major cardiovascular events, end stage relative dysfunction in cardiovascular disease. This is a class one level A recommendation and HGL2 inhibitor dapagliflozin and epagliflozin are recommended in patients with type two diabetes and half rough to reduce the hospitalization and heart failure and cardiovascular disease. Recommendation for the treatment of uh, cardiomyopathies. Uh, sometimes we have the patient diagnosis and uh, with amyloid, uh, cardiac amyloidosis, and this patient diagnosis and treatment and cardiac amyloidosis in heart failure patients. In the guidelines and the new treatment, we have the patient with cardiac amyloidosis. Is one a, minute left. Yes, okay. One cardiac minute. amyloidosis, tafamidis, and uh, we have to start the treatment. It reduces the hospitalization and the patient's symptoms. And tafamidis treatment is a very big trial, and we will see this on the slide as cardiomyopathy. And recommendation of, it's very important, this recommendation of pre discharged early post discharge follow up patient to reduce the rehospitalization and improve the quality of life. What to do and what and not to do, message from the guideline, many things.